We're used to these trade-offs between power, uh, between battery life, and then between compatibility with existing apps. You, you can't have all three generally, but they seem to have achieved this. It seems to me like this is the biggest technological shift that I can recall from Apple since they got Next and Next Step and built, yeah. you know, uh, the Mac operating system in iOS on top of that work. Yeah, it's it's rare for us to be so hyperbolic to say, oh my God, you had to go back 25 years for something this seismic, but it, it it really is. And and the funny thing about it is the new laptops look exactly the same as the ones that they were selling a week ago. There's no difference on the outside. The difference is entirely on the inside, but it really is that seismic of a change. And the analogy I used earlier this week is that it, it's like that old saying that you can have your cake and eat it too. But this is really like having your cake, eating it too, and being able to share it with your friends in terms of there is no trade-off. You, you get the all-day battery life. It never gets hot. You don't have to really do anything special. You don't have to turn your brightness down. You don't have to, oh, this turn off my email so it's not running in the background. Uh, you don't have to do any of that. And the sharing it with your friends part of the extension of the analogy is – uh, the compatibility that, yes, there's this technical shift under the hood where they're using an entirely different architecture. But as a user, whether you're a technical user or a just plain consumer user, your existing software just works. You don't have to do anything differently. I, I'm going to jump in to say here, uh, I want to add one thing to my review. One thing is yep. not perfect. I am making this call. We are. I am on the M1 MacBook Pro right now but I am not using the webcam because I do not want viewers out there to suffer and have to see me through a very, can I say craptastic on, on the show? Is you that, can. That's not a curse, That's what we'll right? allow it. You'll allow it. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, producers. Because that webcam, the webcam that comes on me is, is really unacceptable. It's a 720p camera. We are all on Zoom all day. You don't look good on it. So I have a actual camera hooked up right now to this machine. It's running cool and quiet. I'm running a bunch of things but I have a giant camera sitting in front of me. Oh, John, you know, I'm, we've I'm talked on, about Apple I'm on for, the M1 for years camera. as a... John, we've talked about so Apple for years as a, as a second strike player. Uh, they waited uh, to, to do certain things in phones. They clearly waited to do things in television. Now they've waited to do things in engineering uh, with chips. I, in terms of going vertical, I just wondered, you, you see this as an extension of all of that? Yeah, they've always been a measure, measure twice, cut once company, maybe measure three times, cut once. Um, I, I, the story I've heard a long time ago was that Steve Jobs had a philosophy. I mean, and I, I know he's been gone for a while, but basically, if you wanted to create a disruption, it wasn't enough to be a little bit better. You really needed to wait until you were 10 times better. And, you know, that's hyperbole from Steve Jobs, but... It, it, Waiting until you can make a colossal improvement to make a transition is sort of the Apple way, as opposed to, say, making this transition three or four years ago, which is probably around the timeline where it would have been an even transition, where they could have made this, the performance, et cetera, would have been the same, but it wouldn't have been this overwhelming, oh, my God, you get all-day battery life. It's totally different than it was just a week ago. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.